combine philosophy and art. Hey everybody, this video is made for the Hackaday 2022 prize. A big shout out to DigiKey and SupplyFrame for making it happen. The theme of the challenge is reuse, recycle and revamp. It's all about tailoring projects to make use of existing resources, keeping them out of landfill rather than contributing to it. Our chosen resource to focus on is plastic waste. I'm not going to spend too long talking about plastic waste because I'm sure by now most of you know it's a big problem. If you want to learn more, you can check our project documentation. Our solution is a manufacturing system that allows people to produce 100% recycled plastic skateboard decks. The most unique and innovative part of our system is our mold, as previously it did not exist, so it's been the focus of our development. We're working to dissolve the social, economic and technical barriers that prevent products made from recycled plastic from entering the world and prevent people from skating. In its essence, we want to increase the accessibility of recycling equipment, enabling more people to recycle and hit the street. In our last video, we showed you how to build our mold. In this video, we're going to share lots of details about how to use it to make 100% recycled plastic skateboard decks. Let's begin. You're going to need four small cold chisels, four big cold chisels, a half inch socket wrench, a 30 millimeter socket, and one long one if you have it available, an impact driver, a half inch impact driver adapter, a drill, an M4 and an M10 drill bit, a large adjustable wrench, pliers, a set of chisels, a set of flat head screwdrivers, car upholstery removal tools, some spatulas, four M20 bolts, a heavy hammer, some silicon oil, a hanging scale, a chain hoist, a 1.5 meter lifting strap, two crowbars, a half inch driver offset handle, an extension handle, a plastic beam made from the same material as the decks, a heat gun, some cooling fans, a ventilation system, an extruder, and of course, a mold. Before making a deck, make sure that you have a good source of plastic available. We recommend polypropylene. It has nice pop, which means it's good to skate. It doesn't stick to the mold, and it's relatively safe to work with. You can get a larger batch of white, and then smaller batches of colors, because it's possible to mix the colors with the white to make a larger batch of color. You're going to need flakes less than 5mm, around 3mm is perfect. The final deck weighs about one7 kilos, but we recommend starting with around 25 kilos in case something goes wrong. You don't want to be running out halfway through. We're going to start preparing the mold. We're going to begin by opening it. Before beginning, we're going to make sure that all four brakes are on. From this point on, you should be wearing safety boots with a protective toe cap. We're going to remove the bolts. The easiest way to do so is with an impact driver and a driver offset handle. You can hold the bolt from the top with the driver offset handle and loosen the nut from the bottom with the impact driver. Notice the socket nicely catches the washer and the nut. You can store it in the middle pocket of the support frame so that you don't lose it. If one of the nuts gets stuck, you can use the driver offset handle extension and a socket wrench to loosen it.
Once all the bolts are removed, lift the support structure and place it to one side. Using the lifting strap and the chain hoist, lift the top face off of the mold. Undo the brakes and remove the mode from the top face. Next, we're going to apply a layer of silicon oil to the inside face of the mode. This is to prevent the plastic from sticking. The easiest way to create a gradient pattern on a deck is to sprinkle a little bit of plastic by the entrance of the mold. Then when the hot plastic is extruded over the top, it will spread it along the body of the deck. Next, we're going to lower the top face back on the mold, reinstall the support structure and bolt it closed. Notice the arrows on the horizontal plate. This shows the direction of the flow of the plastic, so you know which way round the top face should go. We're going to tighten the bolts in the same way that we loosen them, with the impact driver and the offset handle. Start in the middle, then do one end, then do the other end. Now we're ready to preheat the extruder and the mold. Make sure your ventilation is switched on. We use two oven hoods directly above the mold. For the next few steps, you're also going to need some safety equipment. You're going to need overalls, an air filter mask, heat resistant gloves, safety glasses, and a face shield. Our face shields are also made from 100% recycled plastic. They were given to us by our friends at Plasticpreneur. Check them out to see what they're up to. So now it's time to switch on the control boxes of the extruder and the mold. The extruder and the mold need a 16 amp three phase power supply each. So make sure you have two 16 amp plugs available or one 32 amp plug, which you can split. Switch the control boxes on using the green switch, making sure that the emergency stop is released.
For this video we're using polypropylene, so the temperatures and speeds are shown to work with this material, but if you change the plastic type, you'll have to change them also. On the extruder, set the first PID controller slightly less than the second two. The extruder will take about 15 minutes to heat up and the mold will take about 30. While they preheat, you can prepare your plastic. You can add about 20% of a color to white and you'll get a strong tone throughout the whole batch. To check how the colour comes out, you can extrude a little bit. We recommend doing this anyway so you can check that the plastic melts okay with the settings that you have. Wait until 5 minutes after all three PID controllers have reached temperature. Place a bucket of cold water underneath the nozzle to catch the plastic. Pour your plastic in the hopper. To make sure the plastic doesn't get stuck in the hopper, you should take a beam and stir it. Ideally, you want something made from the same material as the deck that you're extruding, but if not, wood will work fine. Never use anything metal because it can jam the machine, and under any circumstances, don't put your fingers inside the hopper, otherwise they might break. On the motor control panel, set the potentiometer to the lowest setting. Then press the green button. Slowly turn it up to around 15 to start the extrusion screw. Whenever you're in front of the extruder and the barrel is hot, as well as your overalls and safety boots, you should also be wearing gloves, eye protection and face protection. This is to protect you from spitting plastic. Watch as the plastic comes out the end of the nozzle. If you see any lumps, it means that you're extruding too fast or the temperature isn't enough. Let the plastic collect in the bucket. You can collect it, shred it and reuse it later. On the motor control panel, press the red button to stop the extrusion screw and the flow of plastic. If the colour isn't strong enough, you can add a little bit more. Whilst they're preheating, we can also prepare to attach the nozzle of the extruder to the nozzle of the mould. You'll notice we added a tap to the mould. This is to quickly look in the plastic when the mould is full, without losing any pressure and without the plastic leaking out. We found that a half inch tap is best. Three quarter inch is too hard to release and one quarter inch breaks too easily. We also put a tap on the exit hole. This one doesn't take as much pressure, so it can be smaller. A quarter inch is enough. The tap must be opened to fill the mold. If it's not, gently try and open it. Don't force it, it can break. If it's stuck, it most probably has plastic inside. You can use a heat gun to soften it and try again. Once it's open, you can use a drill. Use an M4 drill bit to make a pilot hole, and then an M10 to clean out the bulk. Be careful not to drill the threads, the aluminium block, and make sure that the tap is open. If there's any leftover debris on the thread, you can use the heat gun and a flathead screwdriver or a spatula to clean it. Once the mold has reached temperature, wait 5 minutes and give the bolts on the mold one last tighten using the socket wrench and the driver offset handle with the extension before attaching it to the extruder. Line up the nozzle of the extruder with the nozzle of the mold. If necessary, adjust the alignment bolt so that the nozzle of the extruder aligns with the nozzle of the mold.
Using the handles, attach the nozzle of the extruder to the end of the mode. When it's fully tight, lock the wheels of the extruder with all four brakes. Add your plastic to the hopper. On the motor control panel, set the potentiometer to the lowest setting. Then press the green button. Slowly turn the potentiometer up until it reaches between 5 and 10. Let it run slowly for the first 5 minutes to clear out any plastic from the entry to the mode without building up too much pressure. After 5 minutes you can turn the potentiometer up to around 30. Continue to add plastic to the hopper. Don't let the hopper empty at any point otherwise air will get pumped into the mode and you will get air bubbles in the deck. Remember to stir the plastic. Every few minutes check to see if the plastic is coming out of the exit hole. Once you see plastic coming out of the exit hole, close the exit tap. Continue to extrude into the mode for around 3 minutes after the plastic starts to exit the mode. This is to build up pressure inside. Finally, press the red button on the motor control panel to stop the extrusion screw and immediately close the entry tap to lock the pressure inside the mode. Using the quick release handles, unscrew the mode from the nozzle of the extruder. Immediately put a threaded end cap in the nozzle whilst it's still hot. This is to prevent any molten plastic going hard in the thread and blocking it. Once the end cap is in place, you can open the tap again. This makes it easier to clean. Now that they're physically separate, you can turn off both the extruder and the mold using the green switch on the control box. Move the extruder to one side and turn on your cooling fans. With active cooling like this, it takes one hour for the mold to cool. If you leave it to cool without a cooling system, it's going to take three or four hours, so we highly recommend getting one. You can check the mold is cool by turning it on briefly to see the temperature on the PID or by using a thermometer. If it's less than 60 degrees, it's ready to open. We're going to start by loosening the bolts with the same technique that we used at the beginning of this video with the impact driver and the driver offset handle. They're most likely going to be stuck in the beginning so you'll need the socket wrench to loosen them a little bit. Again, so that you don't lose them, you can keep them in the top pocket of the top support structure. Once the nut and washer are removed and the bolt is partially open, you can use a crowbar to lift it all of the way. Once you've loosened the bolts, we can take off the top support structure and place it to one side. Clean any debris using a hammer, a chisel and a spatula.
Gradually, try to lift the top surface of the mould. Sometimes this alone is enough for it to open. Pay attention to the bottom edge of the mould and make sure that it doesn't start to lift off of the table, otherwise it might fall. If it doesn't open by this alone, there's a few techniques you can try. The first is to take a crowbar and lever between the handles to try and pry it open. If it doesn't work with one crowbar, take a second and then try prying it from opposite edges. If you have a friend around, it's great if you can get them to help. If it still won't open with the crowbars, you can take some chisels and a hammer and hammer them in the four spots between the handles. Start with the smaller chisel in all four spots, then try and open it with the chain hoist. If it won't, move to the bigger chisels and try again. When trying either of these techniques, do not lever from the ends of the modes as this puts a lot of stress on the end bolts connecting the aluminium deck face to the steel horizontal plate. It may tear the threads. If it still won't open, the final technique you can use is the release holes on the top of the mold. Take four M20 bolts and tighten them into the four holes. You can do a half turn on each hole and then rotate so it evenly lifts up the top face. If there's plastic debris in the hose, you can use a heat gun and a flathead screwdriver to clean it out. Once you have freed the top face fully and lifted it, release the brakes and move the mode out from underneath it, revealing your deck. You can lever the deck out of the mold with a flat, soft tool. We found these which are designed for removing car upholstery. Use something soft like plastic. Never use anything metal, otherwise you will scratch the mold. The deck should easily lift out as the plastic shrinks a little bit as it cools. Place the deck to one side on something soft. Now that we've removed the deck, we can close the mold so that it's ready for the next extrusion and the inside faces stay clean. Again, apply a layer of silicon oil and if you're going to make another deck directly after, Remember to add the colour for the gradient.
There's a few last things we need to do. You're going to need some tools and some skate hardware. A hand drill, a 5.5 millimeter drill bit, a small countersink, a razor blade, a deburring tool for sheet metal, an allen key, a wrench. Instead of the allen key, you can use a hex head screwdriver, a ruler, a fine half round file, hand sanitizer, a clean rag, some spray mount glue, grip tape, eight M5 by 40 millimeter countersunk bolts, eight M5 lock nuts, some razor pads, and some trucks. Take a metal deburring tool and give the edge of the deck a slight radius. Now we're going to drill the truck holes. You'll see eight pilot holes which have been marked by the mold. Take a 5.5 millimeter drill bit and drill all of these all the way through. You can also use the deburring tool to clean the edges of the holes. Countersink the holes on the top face of the deck. To make sure that the grip sticks well, we're going to clean the deck with hand sanitizer and then apply a layer of spray glue over the top before attaching the grip. Wait five minutes for the glue to become extra sticky. Then apply your grip tape. We're gonna start from the middle of the deck and then work out to one end and then the other end. Thank you. 
you can line up one edge of the grip with one edge of the deck. Start from the middle and work to the edges to remove any air bubbles. Be careful in the dip at the beginning of the transition to the nose and the tail. A lot of time the grip doesn't stick well here so sometimes it needs an extra bit of glue. Use a half round file to remove the excess grip by running it at 45 degrees along the edge of the deck. You can also use a razor blade, but it makes sense to at least mark it with a file. Finally, we're going to install the trucks on the deck. You're going to need slightly longer hardware than a normal deck. We went for 40mm. We also suggest installing riser pads. These are to protect the plastic from the hard metal edge of the trucks. We got these. They're called NYX Originals. They're made from cork, which is really cool. There's a link to them in the description of this video. The deck has a nose and a tail. You can tell the difference because the tail of the deck is slightly shorter and slightly lower than the nose. You can measure the distance using a ruler between one of the truck holes and the end of the deck. Alternatively, you can remember which way it comes out of the mould. The arrows on the mould point the same direction that the deck will be skated, so towards the nose. You can differentiate the nose from the tail by installing two different coloured bolts on the tail. Tighten the nuts and the bolts and the deck is done. With something sharp, make eight holes where the bolt holes are to stick the bolts through. Tighten the nuts and the bolts and the deck is done. You can collect, shred and reuse your offcuts to make another deck. Now we're ready to hit the street. RPSD is a non-profit organization publishing free open source research about sustainability. If you would like to follow and support the development of this project, you can follow the links below to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, join our mailing list, make a one-time donation or become a Patreon. Spreading word about our project is a huge help for us. It opens a lot of doors. If you hear about any opportunities or collaborations, we're really keen to know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.